there were days when I just sat in my backyard and drank Chardonnay because I couldn't make any decisions. I was paralyzed by the fact that the weight of the world felt like it was on my shoulders and I didn't really know how to navigate it. I spoke to Dorinda recently and she said that the audiences are going to love to see that you have found your voice. And you know, in the six plus years that we have seen you on Beverly Hills, how did you find your voice? A lot of the reason I found my voice, I believe, is what I went through and yeah. being able to recover from what I went through. Mm -hmm. I think that when you go through something, I know that when you go through something that you think you'll never survive your way through mm -hmm. and you find a strength inside of you that you didn't know you have. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when you go through other trying times in your life, you can draw on that strength because you know that you have it inside of you. Mm -hmm. And I remember when one of my friends hugged me at the funeral, he said to another friend of mine, she's never gonna survive this because it was just so overwhelming. Everything I was left with, with the financial issues and a child and, and all the tragedy and just, I, I was in two different litigations. I mean, it was a complete mess. And there were times when I thought, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this, but now that I know that I can, it gives me a voice to speak out, not only for myself, but for others. Yeah, I mean, how did you get through those times? I know, I'm sure your daughter was probably, you know, your inspiration, I would imagine. Well, I knew that I had to survive and make it through so that I could take care of her. As you said, it's, I mean, Kennedy was my first and foremost concern. And I just, day by day is all I can tell you. I mean, it was one disappointment after the other as things were unfolding. And I would just get calls from the attorneys and calls and calls, and it was never anything positive. And there were days when I just sat in my backyard and drank Chardonnay because I couldn't make any decisions. I was paralyzed by the fact that the weight of the world felt like it was on my shoulders and I didn't really know how to navigate it. And thankfully, John, my now husband, um, who was my friend then is also an attorney and he came in and really helped me. We didn't really like each other for the first couple of years really? because <laughs> every time he called me, it was bad news. Yeah. And so, um, but he stood by my side through everything and helped to run the two different um, law firms and help them to help me navigate everything I was going through. And that's why I believe I'm married now because I would have never trusted anyone again after all the lies that were built in my previous relationship and having someone that just stood by me, even though we couldn't stand each other for a while, it was, uh, I think it's the reason that I trust him so much and we yeah. became best friends. Oh, definitely i'm sure that it had to be extremely difficult to to even want to get probably back into another relationship after that i i think if it wouldn't have been someone that i trust so much because of everything i went through i don't think i would have ever been in a relationship again i just felt so betrayed and also when your life plays out on television and in the tabloids and in the news i don't know how you meet someone that you've never been with before and just assume that they're not going to have so many preconceived sure. thoughts about who you are. Yeah, no, definitely. Is it hard for you? I know, like you said, you speak out and you do such amazing work for so many domestic violence um, victims and things like that. But is it hard for you to relive this on camera again and bring it back up for so many people to watch and dissect and, you know, things like that? Is that going to be hard for you to kind of relive again? After speaking for so many years, I've told my story so many times, and it's almost like I'm telling a story about someone else. Yeah. Because it's hard for me to believe that I ever allowed myself to be a victim and to put up with all that I did. But when you're in it, it's really hard to reflect on what you're going through because it's just a day-to-day -day anxiety and trying to keep the lid on the pot and trying not to let things boil over. And that's why in season one, I really felt like I had become a ghost of myself. When I saw myself on TV, I was like, wait, who is that girl? Because I just seemed like a Stepford wife because I, you know, whenever you're in a violent relationship, you, or an abusive, even emotionally abusive relationship, you maybe don't laugh as much as you used to. You don't talk as much as you used to. You, you know, you're always trying to just keep things calm and I became a shell of myself and I had a friend call me after seeing part of the season and he said 
I don't know who that girl is on that show, but it's not you. And he's like, no one is seeing like how vivacious and funny and everything that you are. And you just seem like a completely different person. And watching myself, I started to realize that as well. And also just seeing my relationship on camera, it was even becoming more and more evident to me that it was so dysfunctional and awkward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, did the show almost act as like, not like a wake up call, call, but like for you to see your relationship through a different lens, I guess. Absolutely. I, I feel like in retrospect, and I didn't know this at the time, but I thought that the cameras perhaps would provide some protection for me because abusers don't act out at the mall or in a restaurant. They act out behind the scenes. And when your life and the behind the scenes of your life is also on camera, You, I felt like I would have somewhat of a sense of protection. I mean, that, in looking back, I believe that that's one of the reasons that I did the show. And I also watched Kyle and Mauricio's relationship and Lisa and Ken's, and then I saw mine, and I saw such a stark contrast that it made, like you said, it magnified the fact that I knew it was in an unhealthy relationship, but it really, helped me bring it to the forefront. Like, this is definitely unhealthy. And I remember doing Wendy Williams mm -hmm. and she said, he abuses you, doesn't he? And it was evident just to her from watching a few of the episodes. And of course I denied it immediately, yeah. like anyone would, yeah. but it yeah. was interesting to me that it was so obvious to other people. Right, yeah, no, definitely. Would you ever wanna go back to Beverly Hills Housewives and do it again now that you're in such a great place in your life? I would go back. Yeah. Um, I would go back for several reasons. One, I feel as though a lot of the viewers, they just saw the tragedy of my life and they didn't get a chance to see what happened next. And when we got married in a beautiful wedding special um, that David Tutera did for us and my husband adopted Kennedy before he even married me. And he's just been such a huge supporter in my life. And now that I'm out there working with victims and survivors, I would love for people to see that aspect of my life mm -hmm. and that there is life after. Yeah.